So let's get started and welcome everybody. Remember to be active and send your questions and we will be talking around half an hour and then we'll take some questions. So the topic today will be how we can use better instant mobile messaging and also how we can use WhatsApp marketing in business. So we'll start about uh, talking a, a little bit about WhatsApp and why it's so important. And actually the first question is, if you are using WhatsApp, please type yes in the chat box so that we get some feedback. And most people are using, although there's some really interesting points that we'll talk, because in some parts of the world, people are using more WhatsApp than others. But mainly we'll also talk about instant mobile messaging, which is a big new trend and many businesses have no idea how they can leverage and how they can uh, learn how to use to use instant mobile messaging to communicate better. So first we talk about that and then we will cover what are some of WhatsApp's biggest competitors. We will also see some interesting case studies and we will also see some creative usage that companies are giving to WhatsApp and how some companies are using WhatsApp even as a communication uh, or let's say channel of communication towards our customers. But let's start by checking some of the statistics. I think uh, these stat st uh, statistics we see here are quite amazing. So we can see that these are from actually from April and uh, this is from April 2013 to April or August 2014. And we can see that WhatsApp has more than 600 million users right now. And I have to highlight that these are active users, not only people who have download, downloaded the app. And interestingly, most of the users who use WhatsApp, they use it quite frequently. So many people watch their WhatsApp even more than 100 times a day. And there's a popular saying saying that uh, people nowadays, they check their mobile phone just before going to sleep. And they also do it the first thing in the morning. And what this means is that people are really addictive to using mobile messaging. And as companies, we need to understand how we can tap into this and also how we can communicate with our customers using WhatsApp. So uh, you can see that it's growing all the time. Also, you might know that WhatsApp was bought by Facebook. And that's one of the reasons why it's also growing a lot. And before Facebook bought it, also Google wanted to board uh, WhatsApp. And right now Google is planning to launch their own competitor to WhatsApp because they know that the future is here. So you might be asking, what are some of the biggest competitors to WhatsApp? Well, interestingly, in this chart, we can see the most popular global mobile message messaging app right now, November 2014. And number two is Facebook Messi Messenger. Now, interestingly, um, if you have seen Facebook Messi Messenger lately, uh, you have seen that they have adapted some of the WhatsApp's uh, features. For example, you can send voice messages and you can do some of the same things that we can do with WhatsApp. And uh, however, the quality is not that good and, and so on, but it's interesting to see this. One of the biggest competitor is WeChat. So this is a mobile uh, chat application originally from China, but they are growing a lot. And we will talk a bit about some of the really clever usage they are using and some brands that are using WeChat, for example, promoting uh, their products in China. Then we also have Skype and Viber, which is originally from Israel, Line, which is originally from Japan, and uh, Kik, I think, uh, is really uh, well known in, in some Nordic countries in Europe, for example, in Sweden many celebrities are using quick. So we can see that uh, this, uh, this sector is really fragmented, but WhatsApp is number one application that most people use. Also, I would like to say that there might be a lot of people from US listening this. And in the US, WhatsApp is not as popular as it is in many other places. For example, in Russia, Spain, Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, and many parts of Europe, including UK, WhatsApp is really popular. One of the reasons is that in the US, the text message, um, the price of sending text, text message has been always quite inexpensive. And uh, in other parts, it has been quite expensive. And that's why 
places like Spain has adapted WhatsApp and many even radio programs and TV programs are nowadays using it, even BBC and many others. So we will see some of these cases. And uh, But before moving on, I wanted to share this really interesting slide from Mary Meeker. Ma Mary Meeker is the number one analyst in uh, in uh, in Silicon Valley and he works for KBCB and um, every year he's kind of like giving his uh, uh, indications as to what will happen in the future and interestingly this year he started to talk about this new thing which is evolving and this is the evolution of messaging. So basically he's saying that or she's saying that people used to do broadcasting on Facebook, for example, to large audiences. And this is moving in the future in places and systems where we, we will have more frequent interaction with smaller group of close contacts. And this is really interesting. I hope you have seen this. And if you haven't, maybe you will see this in the future because it will be really, really big thing. And also there's many things how we can leverage this. So basically this means that many companies, many brands, they have to learn how to use these new channels like Snapchat, uh, WhatsApp and WeChat in order to communicate with their possible clients. And also what I want to highlight is that we will need to have more frequency of communication. So frequency of communication is the key here and this is really one of the things. Now, you might be wondering what is happening to traditional social media channels when uh, this is kind of like the new way of the future. Well, one of the things which is happening is simply, as you can see from this slide here, you can simply see that, for example, the use of Twitter is decreasing. And uh, I personally use Twitter. By the way, you can tweet us questions and comments using the hashtag uh, WhatsApp marketing. However, from 2013, Twitter is decreasing a bit as to how people are using it. And uh, it's still really important for many TV programs, many celebrities, many, let's say, one sector that's using Twitter a lot is sports. However, thanks to Snapchat and WhatsApp and many other applications, many people, they don't have uh, that much attention to Twitter nowadays. So that's why Twitter is decreasing or the usage of Twitter is decreasing and declining and people have put the attention to the mobile phones and new kind of mobile messaging apps. And by the way, Twitter is actually also developing their own application, which would be similar to WhatsApp as uh, well as Pinterest. Pinterest is doing the same. So I have some uh, news reports that we can learn a lot. For example, this one says that uh, how WhatsApp will help make money or make Facebook money. So Facebook uh, bought WhatsApp and as it says here, WhatsApp is growing a lot and interestingly, they will not introduce advertising or anything like that. They just want to have really big base of users. And actually, uh, their goal is to have 3,000, uh, sorry, 3 billion users in the next few years using WhatsApp daily. So I want to ask what are some of the benefits of using WhatsApp? So you might be using it daily and um, you might like it or dislike it, but many people like it a lot. And I have uh, gathered here some of the usage that why we use and why it became so successful. So basically it's really easy and simple to use. Um, basically for many businesses, it has replaced the missed phone call meaning that if we only use phone call for communication, many times people do not have time to answer, right? But thanks to WhatsApp, we can send messages. People will see them and hear them whenever they have time. And this will make our communication much more flexible and also much more, much faster, okay? And in many countries, as I mentioned before, WhatsApp has uh, replaced SMS and basically for example, many countries in Europe and in Latin America and in US, they use, well, I would not say US, but in the Europe and Latin America, basically, they use SMS only for authentication. If you open a new bank account or things like that, but mainly, especially young people, they don't use text messaging anymore. They use some kind of app 
uh, like WhatsApp, and that's the way of the future. Also, I wanted to highlight that in the future, WhatsApp will introduce phone calls. So we will have free phone calls starting from the first quarter of 2015, which is really exciting. And that will be the moment where many people <laughs> will not anymore use typical uh, phones, you know, when they do business and when they communicate. Okay, so this will happen in the first quarter of uh, next year. And one of the great things about WhatsApp is that it works in all mobile platforms. Uh, many of these applications, they only started on Android or iPhone, but from the beginning, WhatsApp has been working in Microsoft and Nokia and Blackberry and many other uh, platforms. So that's one of the benefits. And that's why many companies nowadays, they are starting to use WhatsApp marketing and they start like open line of communication, simply opening their WhatsApp and saying to their customers that, hey, you can send us feedback or you can communicate with us via WhatsApp, not only via email, but via WhatsApp, because it's so easy. Now, you might be wondering what are some of the business usages we can, we can get or some of the benefits we can get out of using WhatsApp. Well, some of them are speed. So right now, uh, WhatsApp is the fastest and easiest way to communicate with everybody all over the world. It's also extremely powerful if your company wants to go abroad you should always use WhatsApp. I've been consulting companies as to how they can use WhatsApp. And one of the great benefits is that you don't have to do long distance phone calls and so on. You just use WhatsApp because so many people are using it and you can communicate instantly uh, all over. For example, on my WhatsApp, I communicate with people all around the world and it's extremely fast and safe and effective. Now, also the opening ratio of the message that comes to WhatsApp is extremely high. Think about the email that you will send to one customer or, or anyone you are sending your email. We, we're not sure if that email will be open. However, with WhatsApp, the opening ratio is really close to 100%. Then frequency of use. I mentioned earlier that most people use WhatsApp even 100 times a day which is extremely uh, high amount, and also the quality of communication. So uh, many of my clients that I have been consulting, they are using WhatsApp as, as a channel to communicate with their clients. And what they say is that the new lead that comes from WhatsApp is easier to convert to paid lead than somebody who will send them an email or give them a call. So the quality of communication is much more, let's say, private, and there's a better better quality of communication simply and that's one of the big big advantages of uh, why businesses should use whatsapp also it's a preferred channel by consumers uh, many people do not like uh, you know using sms or even phone calls and in addition you can send text messages uh, in addition to text messages you can send voice and video messages now moving on uh, as i mentioned before uh, Facebook wants WhatsApp to have 3 billion users in the future, which is quite amazing uh, if you think about it. So it's growing a lot and it's, it's, it will be really big. And also we are getting to see that many different industries are starting to adapt WhatsApp as a way of communication. So here's the news where it says that many young people in UK, they demand, you know, financial services and banks to have whatsapp style messaging system because they don't want to use email or these kind of old ways of communication and this is something that all the companies should be thinking right now because there's big opportunities if you understand how big this will be in the future and also everything is moving really fast we will have more technology uh, in the future one of them is wearable computing and of course whatsapp will be one of the first apps that you can use in your wearable computing device. And here's one news about that. And it's interesting to see that WhatsApp is so popular that uh, already it can be used in many different wearable computing devices. Now, also I wanted to share some case studies, but before that, let's see how WhatsApp is being used in a society. Here's interesting news I just came up, which is that BBC is using WhatsApp to combat Ebola 
in West Africa. So basically when there's any kind of disaster and these kind of things, we used to use Twitter because Twitter is really fast when something happens and we have to get the message across really fast. But right now that is moving to WhatsApp. Also in some countries like Chile, government is using WhatsApp to communicate when there's like volcanoes and any things like that. Uh, in some parts of Europe, like in Spain, uh, some police are using WhatsApp in order to help people to communicate and, and help people to, or let's say, help citizens to get um, uh, some important information to the police. So they are using WhatsApp for that. And uh, here's a similar news. This is from India. So it says Mumbai police uh, creates WhatsApp groups to speak to citizens. And this is really interesting. There's also a lot of cases of different doctors all around the world using WhatsApp to communicate with their, you know, with their patients. Now, moving on, you might be wondering how companies can use WhatsApp. Before we go there, I want to highlight that there's a few things to know. Number one, you cannot advertise on WhatsApp, which means that we cannot use it uh, in the same way that we would use Facebook, where we just create a presence on Facebook, Facebook page, and then we say that this is our product and service and here's our discount. So that's not what WhatsApp, uh, that's something you cannot do on WhatsApp. What you can do is that you can open a channel on WhatsApp, a new phone number, and you can start promoting that phone number on your website and you can start receiving inquiries and communication from your uh, possible clients. That's really interesting and that's allowed. And also another thing I wanted to highlight is that WhatsApp hasn't released the API, uh, which means that you cannot really develop applications on top of WhatsApp. For example, when Twitter was, uh, when Twitter started, they, they released the API. So many people created different kind of programs for, in order to make use Twitter. Uh, WhatsApp is doing this because they hate spam and they don't want spam and that's why they are not releasing the api so that's limiting a bit as to how we can use whatsapp however there's a great opportunities when we are creative uh, one example this example comes from india uh, from bollywood and i think this will also happen in hollywood or in many places in the world so basically when there's a new movie what happens normally is that you take the trailer and you put it on YouTube in order to get a lot of exposure to that new movie. Right now, uh, Bollywood is working with WhatsApp and they have created a specific uh, broadcast list as this one uh, new movie, which was called Happy New Year. And basically, if you join this WhatsApp broadcast list, it was not a WhatsApp group, but broadcast list, you could get the trailer and information about this new movie. And it was really successful campaign and really interesting and creative way of doing marketing. Next example comes from Spain. That's why I have the text here in Spanish. And this was Toyota, the Japanese car manufacturing company. Basically what they did is that they didn't, remember you cannot spam, you cannot send your price details or anything like this in WhatsApp. But what they did is that you could, um, you could participate in the competition and you could get yourself an iPhone 5 if you would change your name or your status on on WhatsApp, if you would change it to this word, which is hybridisate. So that was the word related to this new car of Toyota. And it was really viral because a lot of friends of people who did it started to ask why they are doing it. And they say, hey, I'm participating in this new campaign of Toyota. And this campaign was done already like a few months ago and, and it was sorry, a few years ago. And it was really successful. And it was also a great way of how we can use these new platforms in a creative way. Uh, in Brazil, WhatsApp was used by Helman, the big brand. And basically what they did is they are promoting mayonnaise, as you can see here on the screen. And they hired big uh, or top chefs who created new recipes of how to make food using their, their product. And you could join this WhatsApp list and you could get these tips about how to use this mayonnaise uh, and you could get this on your mobile phone. And it was really creative marketing campaign and also really successful. 
And these are just few of the marketing campaigns that big companies are right now using. And you have to be really creative. And also you have to think as you would think with email marketing as to how you can give something beneficial to people and how not to spam them or send your pricing details or anything like that. But think about how you can send valuable content to WhatsApp. And in order to do that, you would create a broadcast list in WhatsApp. And I recommend not using WhatsApp groups. And we'll talk about that in a, in a bit here. So let's now talk about smaller companies and what different companies are doing. There are many, many ways to do this. And uh, obviously, we don't have that much time. But if you have questions, you can you can send them later. I will just show some companies and some applications because remember, this is all about uh, opening this new line of communication and allowing people to communicate with us. So let's see some creative ways. Uh, one of them is, as I mentioned before, opening a line of communication using WhatsApp. So this means that you will simply open a new number and you will start promoting that number and you will say on your Facebook, on your Twitter and on your website that, hey, you can send inquiries or questions to this number in our WhatsApp. And we have many successful companies who are doing this. Uh, one of my uh, one of my clients, he they have more than they are selling medical devices in Latin America and they have more than 600 clients in the WhatsApp directory and they are communicating with all of these clients and they have even segmented them in different broadcast lists so it's really exciting and there's many many w things you can do okay so the number number one thing is that you have to create a new phone number and you use this phone number over internet and uh, and you simply uh, communicate with whatsapp then you can create content that your customers would share on whatsapp and what this means is that many people nowadays they love sharing content using whatsapp okay and here on the right hand side you can see one example this is a dog training course in mallorca spain and basically it was really interesting uh, but some of the people who are participating in this course they said to the owners that hey could you create an image or some video something and i will send it to people that i know who are interested of dog training via whatsapp okay so as companies we need to create content there's another uh, case study in many times, you know, one of the biggest things right now in politics is the use of social media. And I would say that in the next elections, one of the biggest things is instant mobile messaging. And uh, that's why many candidates are creating viral videos and viral content that people could share using WhatsApp. This was also done in Brazil. They had presidential elections and uh, the candidates created videos that people would create uh, share using WhatsApp. Okay, and then also I mentioned here the strategic use of WhatsApp groups. Now, as a general rule, I would say do not use WhatsApp groups with your clients. Okay, do not use them. However, if you have a specific event, if you if you are working with uh, other salespeople in your organization, you should definitely use WhatsApp group. And um, there's many, many benefits. However, you cannot add all of your clients into one WhatsApp group. So one rule is that people in one WhatsApp group, they should all know each other. So that's how you know if you should create a new group or not. OK, you can create something else which is called broadcast list so broadcast list in whatsapp is think about it as an email list uh, however there's more interaction remember one of the things we mentioned before that in the future there will be more and more interaction and there will be more and more frequency of usage so so that's also interesting and um, if you work in b2b you might be wondering how we can leverage instant mobile messaging i would say i highly recommend that you teach your salespeople how they can use WhatsApp to communicate because they can send offers and they can send even uh, they can do video messaging using WhatsApp and they can close more sales. And also you can as a B2B company, you can create the WhatsApp group and you can communicate better internally. 
So there's many, many benefits. And basically, it's all about communicating faster and more effectively. So uh, one more thing about broadcast list. Uh, here we can add and we can create broadcast list. In one broadcast list, we can have uh, more than 200 users. I think it was 256 users. And in one WhatsApp group, we can have 50 users. With already 50 users, I don't recommend creating big groups with uh, on WhatsApp because everybody will see everybody else's messaging, so it's really confusing. Uh, I recommend using broadcast list if you have a lot of people, but they are extremely powerful uh, in order to help the internal communication of your company. Because remember, it's all about mobile marketing in the future and people will use their mobile phone all the time. So let me share one more thing and then we take some questions. Uh, many online publications have also started to use WhatsApp. So they have noticed that like Huffington Post, uh, they have noticed that people are now watching and reading news on their mobile phone, right? So if your company has a website, uh, if you are sharing articles on your blog and anything you, you are doing, you should always add the social bar, right? So that people can share articles on on uh, Twitter and, and Facebook and so on. However, I recommend that you already think ahead and you, you will implement mobile sharing bar on your website. So basically this means when people are reading the news on their mobile phone, they can easily share interesting news using WhatsApp, okay? And this can be done with many different platforms. And I'm sharing here the uh, the tool to do this on WordPress. So there's a WordPress plugin called Mobile Share Bar, and it's extremely powerful. Basically, when people visit your WordPress site and you have this installed, they can quickly share your article and your content via WhatsApp with everybody else. And it's extremely powerful because imagine now people will, would be sharing your content not only on Facebook and Twitter, but also on WhatsApp. So really, really powerful. Now let's go to questions, but before that, let's talk about competitors quickly because many people are always asking, what are some of the biggest competitors? So I take again this list here. Remember that WhatsApp is part of uh, Facebook, so that's why Facebook Messenger is not a competitor. Competitor, However, the biggest competitor is WeChat. And as I mentioned before, they are doing some interesting things and uh, they mainly operate, or let's say they are extremely big in China, but they also are doing a lot of promotions all over the world. And basically, WeChat has many benef benefits and basically, uh, let's say one of the downside of using WeChat is that it's really, there's a lot of messages happening all the time. So there's a lot of like friction and, and many people don't like it. Many people like WhatsApp because it's really clean and easy to use. However, if you are doing business in China, uh, WeChat is the number one platform right now. And in WeChat, you can do, for example, in Beijing, you can order a taxi and you can also uh, do many different things. You can, uh, there's also big brands like Pepsi Cola, British Airways, and many big international brands. They are doing campaigns inside WeChat in China, which is really exciting and interesting. Um, another recommendation that I recommend for many companies is Telegram. So Telegram actually has many benefits and it has many features that WhatsApp doesn't have. You can even use it in your computer. And it's really interesting for B2B communication. Uh, it has self-destructive uh, messaging, which means that you can send an important message and the person who receives it will only see it for some time. So that's really interesting. And then we have some other companies like Line and Viber. Uh, they are both okay. However, they do not come close to where WhatsApp is and also uh, the user base that WeChat has right now. So my recommendations as to competitors is to understand that WeChat is really big. However, they also have really limited usage of the API. So you cannot create presence as you would do on Facebook. Uh, however, if you're thinking of big 
promotions specifically in areas where WeChat is really big, like in China, you should do that. And also Telegram, uh, we have many clients who right now are using Telegram and it can be used for B2B communication. It's a bit more faster than WhatsApp. It's a bit more safer. And also it has some benefits like you can use it with your laptop or your computer. Okay. Now, so that were, those were some of the benefits and we can talk them later when we, when we have the questions. So, uh, as I mentioned before, British Airways and Pepsi, they are doing big, uh, promotions using WeChat and, uh, and WeChat, as I mentioned, is really, really interesting platform. However, if you are thinking something, you should directly contact them because some things are allowed and others are not. Okay, so thank you for your attention. And I think, Annie, now we can take some questions. I don't know if you can see the questions and we have a few minutes here to answer them. Okay, and that's, by the way, that's extremely good question. So uh, first, I would say that uh, companies who have already adapted and who are using WhatsApp, remember, you can use WhatsApp for communication internally, meaning that you will communicate faster and better with your colleagues, and then you can use it externally with your clients. So companies who have started to use have reported that they get amazing results when they increase the usage of voice messaging and video messaging. And personally, I use voice messaging. For example, I have different projects that I work all over the world, uh, and I'm using WhatsApp voice broadcast for them. Because you can explain, let's say in 30 seconds, you can explain something really specific, and it's much, much faster than if you would be typing that. And also remember that always when people can hear you or when they can see you, they will trust you more. So by far, I would say that start using more the voice application or the voice feature and the video feature, uh, even if you would be communicating with your family and friends, because you will see the increase in the quality of communication. And then if you are communicating with your clients, uh, I would say that the voice messaging is, is one of the best things. And there's many companies who communicate first with WhatsApp and then they take that communication to, to phone or, or something like that. But yeah, I, I would recommend that I would use much more voice and video communication. Well, that's an interesting question, and I, I agree. There's a lot of competition, and interestingly, also with this uh, topic, we can see that it's really fragmented. Some areas in the world are using it more. I just saw two days ago one of my clients in Argentina. He said that in TV in Argentina, they, now, they don't now uh, say to people, hey, leave your comment on Twitter. But they, they say, hey, send us a WhatsApp message. So, so they have moved to using WhatsApp even in TV. So uh, what is the future? I don't know. It's interesting to see. But what I do know is that WhatsApp is growing a lot. And mainly they are growing in developing countries. And the main strategy is just to have a lot of users and have a really good user experience. So many of the competitor, competitors like Line and even WeChat there's so many messages and there's so many things happening that many people get bored and they get this feeling that, that you know, I'm getting spammed and I don't want to use this. So that's one strategy. And, and I do know that WhatsApp will, will not introduce advertising, at least in the near future. And I also do know that WeChat is kind of like uh, experimenting with advertising, which I think is interesting because we should have 
competition all the time. But I don't know what the future is. I, I simply do know that the attention of the consumers is moving more to their mobile screen. And uh, when they are on the mobile screen, they want to communicate fast. And normally they use instant mobile messaging apps for that. And that's why applications like Twitter and others are getting less and less attention. Yeah, I would say um, there are some things that, let's say that WhatsApp is not like perfect platform for marketers, which is also really good news because if it would be full of people marketing something to you, it would have uh, much less users. So from marketing point of view, uh, let's have a, let's see some of the disadvantages. Number one, if you are doing customer service, like many, many companies are doing or giving customer support using WhatsApp, it's uh, a bit difficult to do it because normally you would like to use your computer. And that's why I recommend Telegram is interesting because you can use uh, your laptop and computer. So what some companies are doing, there's some ways to do some hacks where you can use it with your iPad and then you can show your iPod, uh, iPad screen in a big uh, screen and, and so on, and then you can do some support. But I would say that one, from marketing point of view, one disadvantage is not having the computer support so that we cannot use it on computer. That's one. The other one is that there's no API, meaning that we cannot build uh, anything on top of WhatsApp. And I also understand it because if there would be an API, we would have so many different applications that everybody would use uh, you know, they would use WhatsApp to spam other people and, and so on. So so that's another one. And obviously the, the fact that in the terms of usage, it says that we cannot advertise. But remember that many times nowadays, we don't need to advertise if we are doing smart marketing. That's why terms like inbound marketing and, and all this, it's all about creating interesting content and opening different channels where people can communicate with us. But uh, those are some of the disadvantages. But I would say that at the same time, I would like to highlight that many companies do not understand how beneficial it is when your customers start to connect with you via WhatsApp and when you start to send voice messages to your clients. That's also extremely powerful right now. And it will make your communication and everything you do much more, let's say, human and there will be a, a bigger level of trust when you start using WhatsApp. Uh, what was the question? If it's a best bait, I, I don't know what, what does it mean exactly? Like the best way of doing two way communication. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I think so. But I would add that Obviously, you have to use email marketing, but there's many companies in Europe, uh, uh, let's say specifically smaller companies, because the smaller you are, the easier it is normally to adapt to these new behavior changes that consumers are, are doing. So, um, yes, I think it's, it's really beneficial. And I was saying that some companies in Europe, they even do 80% of their communication via WhatsApp. However, you should always also have email because you want to send some kind of information with email. But think about, for example, hotels and restaurants. Nowadays, many of them, they send, for example, uh, they receive orders via WhatsApp and then people asking, hey, how do I come to your hotel or your restaurant or whatever? And they can send their location using WhatsApp simply clicking one button and they don't have to explain or send a big email explaining or, or go to Google Maps or anything like that. They can send it quickly. So yes, I think it's a really big opportunity and you just have to see how your company can use it. And as I said, the smaller you are, normally you can adapt faster to these kind of changes in technology. And mm, there's a big, big opportunities right now. But also remember, if you will later see this recording, to review some of the case studies we mentioned before where big companies are using WhatsApp in the K-12 
campaigns as well. But yeah, in order to answer the question, I would say that, yeah, it's a really big opportunity right now, and I highly recommend to use it. Um, I, I don't actually know. I haven't seen any statistics that would say that how much people, how many people are using both of them. So I really, really don't know. Um, it's difficult to answer that kind of question, but I'm sure that many people who have Facebook Messenger, they also have WhatsApp. But, but when it comes to, let's say, typical uh, uh, mob instant mobile messaging apps like WeChat and WhatsApp, Many, the thing is that many people have downloaded these apps, but they normally only have one that they are mostly using. And right now that is WhatsApp. But of course, there's certain people who like using Viber. There's others who like using Line. And uh, however, it depends what your friends are using. And also if your company, it depends what your, what your customers are using. For most companies, that's right now uh, WhatsApp. But if you work, or let's say if you're a comp U.S. company and you want to go and do business, for example, in Colombia or any other region, you can go to Google Trends and you can search the name of that application on Google Trends and you will immediately see, uh, you know, how much that is being used in that country. And Colombia, I know it myself since I do business there, that WhatsApp is a leader there. And after WhatsApp, some people are using Line, but not that many. Most people like using WhatsApp. So that would be my answer. You always have to do the investigation and great tool for that is Google Trends. One last question, Lasse, uh, from uh, our Jenny. Is, uh, also, what do you view as the future of Skype? Is it going to be primarily for video? Um, I, I, uh, again, <laughs> really good question. I don't know. Um, I see it as... Uh, really interesting tool when you are doing or when you're using your laptop or your computer but when people are starting to use more and more mobile marketing uh, well it's still good i i personally use it on my iphone however i think that whatsapp and many of these other uh, applications have many different features that we do not have on skype so i i don't know uh, it's interesting to see i use uh, skype also and it's good for certain things. However, it's a bit different because uh, let's give it the example. If you are a company in, in Miami or wherever and you have a website and in your website you said you can, you can call us or you can send us an email. And in addition, you would say you can Skype us. So it's a really it's a bit weird for new people to Skype a new number. There's a bit like a, like. A, how would I say, there's a big uh, obstacle in order to Skype new people. You normally start Skyping with people you have met or you have uh, talk on email or it's a people you are collaborating with, like Annie, you and me, and we are Skyping a lot. However, if you want to have new clients, I normally recommend WhatsApp because people tend to send WhatsApp to, to people they don't know. It's easier than Skype. So that's the difference that I see in them and also I, I see that the crowd will be much bigger in you know in uh, whatsapp and even v v chat uh, than than you would have um you would have for example on 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 skype one, one more thing about wechat i think it's quite interesting because they have really big user base in china and if you you have to simply open wechat application and you can say that your location and you can get taxi there immediately. So I see, see that that's really interesting because they have integrated the taxi service inside the application. Whereas in Spain or in Europe, in UK, there's many taxis who already use WhatsApp, but I would have to send them a message uh, separately and it's not in, uh, integrated in the same way. So that's why I really like some of the things that WeChat is doing. And uh, let's see if, if it will be more popular in Europe or, or US and Latin America and, and, and so on. But that was just one difference. But I think Skype will keep being important and, and you can do like 
long video messaging and video conferences using Skype and, and it's good for that.